Hey, dads, dads around the world, friends, family, Team Super Dad members around the world. We are everywhere now and we're growing. So that's great to know. You are here on a Team Super Dad podcast live. That means you're watching live somewhere on your phone, on the internet, on a tablet, in a coffee shop. Oh, no, not many coffee shops are open right now, but you're probably locked in your house watching this. And that's great. That means I've got your undivided attention. Today on the Team Super Dad podcast, we are talking undeletable dads and epic stepmoms with Tracy Poisner. Hold tight, roll things. Welcome to Team Super Dad. Real dads creating their best lives ever. More time, more money, more fun. You are not alone. You're on Team Super Dad. Hey, welcome to the Team Super Dad podcast. As you can see, we have with us Tracy Poisner, who up until two seconds ago was dancing uh, to the theme tune. I totally love your theme song. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm just, I'm just editing at the moment, basically. I, 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 I'm going to make the the voice a bit more British, a bit more, you know, because I got it made about two years ago, and it was kind of quick, and and uh, and I, I knew this guy. He's on Fiverr, but anyway, it's, it's obviously very American. Which uh, which I quite like. We have listeners all around the world. Um, yeah, nice. And uh, and obviously you're not from uh, the British Islands. You are over in Canada. I'm from the Commonwealth. I'm from Canada. <laughs> yeah. Canada, oh Canada. Um, and are you actually are you sort of East Coast Quebec sort of like type? No, uh, middle. I'm I'm a little bit west of Toronto, so this is more or less central Canada. Okay. Okay. Well, we, before we jabber jabber, we're going to get on with the uh, the introductions. I was introduced to Tracy after being on the Nacho Kids podcast with Laurie Sims. Which, if you uh, if you are into or you are part of a blended family, a stepmom, a stepdad, uh, then uh, be sure to check out the Nacho Kids podcast. But also, that's how Tracy and I got introduced to each other. Uh, because Tracy works with uh, stepmums and she's also creating uh, a very nice uh, set of content and support for dads as well, for stepdads or dads who are separated. Not stepdads. Oh, oh not stepdads. Okay, sorry. But dads who are separated. Good. Tracy, well, why don't I leave your introduction to you? Like, Have I missed anything else? Well, tell us about yourself. What, what, how no, you? I, you um, I, I don't work with stepdads actually oh. and that's a um that's a funny little thing because most most people make that same mistake you know she works with stepmoms and stepdads no i don't i work with all the people in the same household the stepmoms and the ah. men who they're married to yeah okay um it's a very 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 different vibe um what happens in the other household and i don't know anything about it <laughs> because i mean i am a mom um and my husband is also a stepdad to my daughter, I suppose, but we never lived together while she was still, you know, a kid in the household. Yeah. Um, and my, my divorce was relatively amicable and we certainly never had any kind of difficulties um, you know, co-parenting. I mean, I essentially did everything but, and he was there and we, we had an, you know, she visited him off and whatever, but I had no drama. There was no drama there. I, I have no personal experience in solving the problems that happen in that dynamic with a, a biological mom and a stepdad in the family. That that was like, it, that was dead easy for me. The issues were in my second marriage with my husband who has three kids. And so like, I'm the stepmom of them. And yeah. it's been a great deal of to get to where we are now, like almost 15 years later, we've been through all of the possible things that can go wrong, literally. <laughs> and um, my background is in natural health. I'm a, uh, I'm a homeopath, actually. Okay. I've, I've been doing that for over 20 years. Um, and I have had like 25 years until the present moment of training in human psychology and child development and family dynamics, all of that is extremely important to the work that I do as a homeopath. So I had an incredible wealth of knowledge to draw on at, you know, to help in my own circumstances. Yeah. And at a certain moment I thought, God, what do people do who 
who don't understand what's happening because of, you know, they don't have a bigger context for this. Like, wh what do they do? Where do they start? I mean, never mind all the remedies that I have for helping people through emotional turmoil, whatever. So I initially got into working with the stepmoms, um, like almost four years ago now, I, in an online, I made a Facebook yeah, group yeah. and I, you know, um, and over that time, it slowly became obvious to me that <clears throat> a lot of the problems these women were having were really problems that belong to the dad um, in a really fundamental way. They're his, these are his children. And the conflicts that they're having around parenting and around, um, you know, loyalty, conflict and parental alienation, that like those things belong to him. And I could explain to the partner of that dad, I could explain what's happening and how she can think about it in a better way and how she can take care of herself through all this turmoil. But really the dad is like twisting in the wind here and, you know, he doesn't know what to do. So I, I've really narrowed down the focus of my work to help dads who are stuck in post-divorce conflict and they just don't know how to parent in that environment and nobody can blame them because there's no, really nothing about regular parenting um, that applies until yeah. you've sorted some things out. You know, they, they're scared of losing their kids. As you said, that's, that's on the table all the time. And, um, you know, they've sort of been knocked off their dad pedestal in a way, because very often mom is undermining the ex is undermining their parenting. And, they're also so disrespected by society in general. Yes. As, as single dads, you know, I, a while ago I did a piece um, and an interview about the four archetypes as I see them, the, the single mom, um, the, the, the divorce, the single dad, the stepmom and the stepdad. So the single mom is basically a saint, you know, in society. Yeah. I mean, a single mom is a saintly person doing her best she works so hard, kids, you know? she's managed, she's fought yeah. through, look at what she's done. And the yeah. single dad, the divorced dad, is basically a deadbeat unless he proves otherwise, you know? Yeah. And the stepmom is also at a tremendous disadvantage because she is the Jezebel who split up this family. It doesn't matter if she met the guy five years later. Yeah. She is forever considered potentially the woman who broke up the family and caused this deadbeat to leave his perfectly nice wife. And the stepdad is a kind of hero who walks in and helps saintly single mother. You know, she, he's going to raise someone else's child because deadbeat has walked away from the family. So those are archetypes that we live with. And you basically have to prove that you're not that awful person yeah and it's crazy how that is pretty much perpetuated around the world it's, it's like it, it crosses cultural boundaries and i guess it you know historically if you're going to go down a, a historical kind of cliched sort of women stay at home and, and it's not even cliched it's real isn't it women stay at home work clean cook make yeah. babies they that is their responsibility and job um and then there, there certainly men have played their part in this story over the years of getting drunk in the pub and coming home and expecting dinner and sex and, you know, and, and not lifting a finger to help around anywhere. But, you know, post-war into 70s, 80s, you know, TV probably changing the way that families um, um, looked, um, the rise of equality and women's rights and and basically obvious things like I've, I've got a daughter I don't ever want her to experience not being able to have something do something or be something because she's a woman um but it's kind of swung so far the other way now that that boys are growing up with no idea of what they're allowed to be say do um and if you and if and blind me dare get it wrong you're 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 like <laughs> you're the teenage boy who's, um, who's, who's a sex pest or something like that. And, and, yeah. I, and I do get, you know, girls, I had this conversation a, a, a while back about girls getting their skirts lifted up and things like that. And, uh, you know, like, okay, so it, there's so much to this, but 
as you said, in terms of media and movie portrayal and all those kind of things, the the men get a rough deal in this kind of post breakup um, uh, picture that you've just painted. Yeah. 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 And I, I think, I mean, I, I've gotten so much um, fulfillment really from, from working with dads about this. And, and I think that, you know, part of what I'm offering that is not that I don't hear being talked about in the public discourse anyway, is that, that dads are actually at a certain advantage in terms of the normal development of, of kids, uh, you know, after this kind of breakup, because, because the, you know, I talk about the mother function and the father function, and I, I really want it understood that I'm not necessarily talking about men and women, yeah. but uh, because in reality, both parents are fulfilling both functions. But the mother function is more about the nurture of, of the, the family and the close home life and the hearth, you know, the, 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 the nuclear family and, you know, bringing the child into safety and security in this cocooned environment. And dad is really about leading the kids out into the broader world and issues of, of charisma and competition and, and achievement and courage, you know, those yeah. are things that belong to the father function. And once again, you know, mother and father both do those things. But in general, kids are have an inner directive to be more connected to their dad as they go along, as they come closer to adulthood. And in our society, you know, we're talking about like until 25, right? Like kids are not really, yeah. lots of kids are still uh, at home and not fully fledged adults until they're in their mid twenties. So, so dad has an opportunity to become a more influential person in his kids' lives as they go along, but he needs to play it smart because uh, he needs to get back up on that pedestal and become, uh, find a new way to become a leader for his kids and not, you know, the authoritarian figure who they're going to uh, reject or who mom is going to complain about or mom is going to undermine that parenting um, and who probably, frankly, they, they don't even really want to parent that way. But the other side of the pendulum, if you will, is the total pushover who can't hold any any solid limits for his kids because they're going to just say, you know what, we like, I don't accept that. We uh, That's not the answer I wanted. And I'm going back to mom's and yeah. I don't want to come here anymore. Which is ultimately what the dad absolutely fears. So he's going to yeah. avoid doing those things. Yeah. Okay, great. So we've set that. Okay, that's a perfect setup for this whole conversation, right? I, I, if anyone's listening, of course they're going to be listening on the podcast. Thank you. Um, people are watching on the, on the live stream. Um, please uh, share this, tag people in. We've got the comments live on the live stream. If you want anything to say, we can see that coming in and Tracy and I can cover those comments or questions off. Um, uh, if you're watching on the replay, then give us a hashtag replay. That will spin this around to other people. And if you're listening on the podcast, then please uh, like and review us, uh, share this around. Um, and Tracy, I like to do this increasingly. If people are interested in everything you've got to say, but rather than leave this till the end, I know you've got a, a, a great ebook about the five love languages for kids, and you've got another ebook that in support of of dads going through this situation let's tell people where they can get those things right up front so uh so that so to we give them maximum value as well sure um i do have a facebook group for dads called one for the dads so you just have to go to facebook and and search on one for the dads and make a join request and uh you can get to a uh, a website page i have through a bit.ly slash undeletable dad. That's mm -hmm. bit.ly slash undeletable dad. That will point you and to the link to the face the link to the Facebook group is actually on that uh oh that's okay uh, great yeah is I know it's on there because that's how I got there but um let me put the old HTTP yeah I have to be clear that. about the the love languages is totally not my thing right that's a oh no I know a very famous really... book by Gary Chapman but I've yeah. I've just explored how to use that um 
how to use that concept, those five love languages, as part of a larger concept that I work with. It's something that I've created called restorative parenting um, to use, um, let's say, nonverbal communication to restore these these ties and bonds that that dad should be able to have with his kids. Um, yeah, and, totally. uh, and I love that book. I absolutely, I, I love the adult one. I love the, the love the uh, the kids one, and uh, and it's you know yeah, yeah you've, it's a great sort of accompanying guide you put together there that, to help people who've read the five love languages be like oh that's how I can apply that with my with my right. kids so so that's a, that's that's a great thing to to do as well. Brilliant. Well, listen, I put a couple of your 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 links and things in the in the in the live chat right now, and uh da, 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 in the show notes for our podcast listeners Great. all this will be in the show notes so you can Great. go over and find out about tracy's different communities and different ways you can work with her so right let's try and put this into some kind of order okay we've got we've got the breakup first right so mm -hmm. let's let's we're gonna i think it would be a good idea we can talk about the breakup uh, and look before any dads that are still happily in their relationship turn off please don't <laughs> because because I have learned so much in my breakup and the recovering from that breakup I've learned I've learned so much about how I could have been a better husband mm. how I could have let things go how I could have even in practical terms how I could have appreciated time better and said yes more often to my kids requests because when you're broken up suddenly at the very best you've got half the possible time with with your kids right so if you're still in a relationship then great but my commitment to dads is that they make their relationships as healthy as possible yeah. like living the life they desire not the life they feel stuck in and exiting a relationship well if it's really not working out well in a way that both people feel respected and supported and that you can create a, an effective co-parenting arrangement afterwards so yes anyone whether you're in a relationship or not in a relationship please hang in there because this is going to be a great conversation so tracy we're going to talk about the breakup first and the kind of struggle and the uh, and what goes on for for dads in in that part there i read in your in your in your kind of on the on your landing page stuff about how we take some of the flame and the fire and the and the the conflict out of those those early early times which is something i can very much relate to um and then Obviously, then in the context of everything you've just said, we're kind of going to wander into the situation where we're creating a new relationship and suddenly we've got a step mom that's a nice to be in that relationship. But how are we going to have our kids relate to her well? And then how are we going to manage our ex-wife or partner and the relationship with our kids? Does that sound like a good way to go about this? Yeah, sure. Perfect. Perfect. So the breakup, right? The breakup leaves men. I mean, obviously, people break up for all sorts of reasons, right? But most breakups don't happen overnight. There's been some sort of slow de yeah. degeneration of the of the relationship. So men are left, and no doubt women are as well, right? But men are left pretty hollow as a result of as a result of it. Even affairs, unless someone's a real player, most men have an affair because they're upset about how their marriage is going. They didn't intend to have an affair or upset someone, in my experience. Um, so men are left pretty broken and then rejected and angry, which is no way to go into a, a resolution <laughs> conversation. Yeah. What, what do you say to how do you try and calm men down at that? sort of time how, how do you help them become um more peaceful and effective at that in that time well um i think it's uh you know it's and you can ask say, that in any way you want you, you can it, spin the question however way you want the same answer yeah. as what i tell them later on which is right. focusing on yourself <laughs> excuse me and yeah. it's really easy to like displace your your grief and your your shame about the you know that's something that I've really come into from talking with dads for my podcast is the the incredible shame and embarrassment that so many guys feel about 
having failed at this family project, having failed at a marriage, it doesn't even matter if who who decided to leave. Like the the project was a failure, and um, they are acutely aware of how other people see them, and of having, you know, as one guy who I interviewed said, you know, like like this happened, you know, three or four years after the marriage that I invited you to, like I invited all these people to my marriage and they bought into it with me and they got us marriage presents and accepted her into their circles. And then it didn't work out. And I had to go to them and tell them that like, you know, they believed in me and I didn't deliver. And that's, that's really hard. You know, I think a lot of guys have a lot of, of pride in who they are and so they should. And this is a really profoundly wounding event. So it's really important to, to focus inward and not, I mean, not to beat yourself up, but to, to, to work through those feelings and not to just be angry and to project everything outward and to say like, I'm so angry, maybe I'm angry at myself, but I'm going to be angry at her, or I'm going to be angry at her family or her friends, I'm going to be angry at the court system. Um, you know, I would, I would tell them to do whatever they can to try to stay focused on their desired outcome. Like, what is it that you want? You know, you want, mostly, they really want to protect their relationship with their kids. Mm -hmm. That's the, the thing that's so important, which is also why the ex has such an opportunity to wound him in that exact spot, because she doesn't care about the other stuff that he doesn't care about. She also wants to hurt him. And uh, that's that's the place um, that is so wounding, you know. So I would just say to remember that the way I look at it, I don't think either parent has necessarily has legal rights i mean you do have rights of course but mm. but like according to the universe you don't have rights with respect to your kids your children have rights with respect to you so mm. your children have a right to be in relationship with both of their parents that is their birthright and you are an advocate for your children's rights you're not advocating for your own right as a father to have X amount of time with your children or whatever. Like that's where you get into fighting with kids as if they were chattel and, and they're not, you're, you are just advocating for what is in the best interest of your kids yeah. and, and not for your own, you know, to, to vindicate yourself in some way or to, you know, to uphold your own rights as a father, because that's a, a weird slippery concept for me. Yeah, totally. And I think people can access that uh, through language. Um, you know, you get legal advice or you get support from friends who've been through it before and say, oh, well, don't you know, always talk about our children. Always talk about what's in the children's interests or what works for the children. And you can when you first hear that you can be like wow you know like, you even react to that yeah and that's that's where you that's that's an access for men to 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 realize oh blimey okay i'm still really angry about that and no amount of anger in this situation is actually going to help because she's going to do stuff you're going to get letters you're going to be told you can't have this or you can't have that or they want more of this or they want more of that and we can only be responsible for things that we can change. You actually yeah. put that in your, in your landing page. There's so much of what you put in there resonated with me. And when, when we can start to see that we, okay, so what, what, what can I be responsible for here? First of all, most, because we can all take some responsibility that can take the flame and heat out of a situation and then trying to change things that aren't in our control only causes resistance yeah. from, from people. Yeah. Um, so what about the fear? You know, you, you, you mentioned there the fear that men have in those moments. That fear feels quite real. And if you're in a legal situation, it can actually be quite real. How can they detach themselves? Like, because they want their actions to be placid and forthright and kind of, you know, decent. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, they're, they're frightened and, and are ready to, to defend. How, how can those two things work together? Um, well, 
I think that you're right that you sort of said they're frightened and they want to defend and the the gesture is a, a kind of a you know a fighting one right yeah that yep. that the it's a a reflex action I think to um, to fight to protect your kids and I think that it's important to to turn it around and to protect your kids through the integrity of who you are and and to understand that they are going to be attracted to the that energy of integrity they will be it mm. it just works every time and you're like we have to get away from the um um like cause and effect model of saying or, or, you know, like that every action has the consequence and I need to, you know, you're, you can't micromanage the consequences of every little thing. You have to be ready to stand in your place and know that this is a journey that you're on and there's no way that you can lose your kids if you focus on, you know, increasing your own self-worth and in increasing your integrity like they, it's just a very attractive thing and they your kids are still in your um orbit you know they're in yeah. your orbit and they're going to be attracted like gravity to you they just will be so the more you can stand in your integrity um and you know that's whatever we call that taking the high road or doing the right thing and i'm not saying giving in and being a pushover yeah. because that's not the right solution. Um, but just demonstrating, uh, you know, the, the depth of who you are getting in touch with that. That's something that we work on is, is working on like, who am I anyway? What's really important to me? What are the most important values or concepts that I live by? Who, who would I, I'm not that anymore. If I, if I can't access that? And what do I want to transmit to my children? What is my job as a father? What do I feel that I've done my job if they come away from childhood and adolescence with this? And that that just resolves so much of it. Yeah. And I, I can hear inside of that some dads going, yeah, well, you don't understand. I haven't seen my kids for two years. Yeah. She's a horrible person and and it's a complete absolute effing nightmare and you know i like to see that people can detach those two things you can carry on being dad whether that means writing a diary or emailing them once a day into an account that they're going to get when they're 16 you or got it putting a bit of money into something that's it buying that's presents it. that just sit there you know that's it's, it exactly you've got yeah. it you've got it exactly you carry on being a dad and do all of those things and you send registered mail packages to where they live and um you know with a let's say details or photograph of what's inside yeah. that they are going to get this stuff eventually you don't know how many stories i have of of you know um uh, guys who haven't you know had any word from their kids in five years or seven years whatever and clearly I, d I don't wish for it to take that long but the point is that it happens um yeah a, a friend of mine locally here has heard from her son for the first time in 10 years there was not a word for 10 years and they've just got back together and like it's a wretched ride. I'm not going to say that you're just supposed to sit back and say, this is okay. You need a ton of support to keep yourself um, going, you know, to keep mentally resilient through yeah. that. It's very difficult, but these things do resolve. The kids get older, they get out of the grip of that parent who's done that to them. And then typically they want a closer relationship with the parent that they haven't seen for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, people's, my situation, right, my, I'm not going to speak about my ex, particularly not in any bad ways, but we, we didn't agree about the time that we were going to have with our children. And all I wanted was like, well, I just want to share the kids. Like, I, if I can't be there 100% of the time, I want to be there 50% of the time. And I don't see any just reason why that can't be the case. Now, for some people, there might be a just reason if they live 
200 miles away, it's going to be very difficult for you to have them on a school night. Mm -hmm. um, so dads need to, whoever the parent is that in, in that way, need to just stay calm and see where they can make it work. Yeah. Um, and you can uh, make it work because you can learn how to maximize your influence and your impact in a minimum of time. Yeah, yeah. And there are lots of there, you know, that's a strategy for, for giving your kids what you want them to get from you. That it's a strategy of how, you know, a collection of tools and techniques that, that will maximize your influence on them in this minimum time. And then you're getting what you want, which is to, to have this effect as a parent and uh, and the kids are being much less caught in a struggle of uh, in a in a struggle between the parents of how to how to divide the time yeah. and sometimes even in a struggle of just making it work this back and forth and the half the time stuff you know uh, it's very hard on them yeah so so here we go sort of shifting gears a little bit what can you say about the kind of language that dads can use oh, sorry that's all right my, my problem um you know in terms of talking about the other parent and you know what i, I know the answer to this right but i'm curious to hear you you know for, to have your uh, voice on on the subject for dads listening in talking about that other the other parent how can they how can they catch themselves so that they speak respectfully and in a way that the children don't feel I don't know like like they're having to be made to take sides or something like that yeah well firstly with awareness obviously you have to be aware of your own um thoughts and feelings that are going to drive your actions you have to be responsible for kind of cleaning that up you have to be aware that when you're talking to your child about their mother, you're talking to 50% of your child. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to remember that every cell of your child has half of mom in them. And whatever image they have of their mother is forming part of their self image. And so when, you know, if you put it the other way around, and mom is saying to her little boy, God, you're just like your father. Your dri that drives me crazy. I hate when he does that, and I don't like it in you either. He doesn't feel only bad for his dad. That's like you're talking about me. I am. Of course I'm like my father. I'm proud to be like my father, and yeah. now I can't be because you don't like that. Yeah. And the same, I'm sorry to say, is true of the qualities or the way of thinking or the facial expressions of mom are are part of who that child is they have to feel proud of that otherwise how can you walk around hating yourself and lots of people do right lots of kids of divorce walk around hating themselves because they are never a hundred percent okay wherever they're standing 50 yeah. percent of them is bad right yeah that is so that is that is so powerful tracy that everybody so, needs to really just hear that is that when you bad mouth your ex you are directly causing your child to question them, their own existence, their own being, their own personality. Yeah. 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 And that you just have to think of it in, in the reverse, like that if mom was subliminally saying, you know, um, oh, I don't know, like, oh, do you, are you going to start playing chess now? Like, are you sure you want to do that? Because like, I don't really feel like that's a, you know, and he knows that chess is a big deal for dad. And it's something that he wants to do it because dad is, you know, is an expert chess player and he admires that about him. And mom is like secretly saying, can't you do something better with your time? Go out and play with your friends. But, you know, she's like undermining something about the child that makes him feel good about himself. Yeah. And you also, you don't want to do that to your child, you don't want them to feel bad about themselves. And so this is a real moment of like personal growth yeah. for a dad or a mom to say, I have to become aware of how I am unconsciously 
guiding my child away from things that remind me, you know, from growing in a way where I see the other parent blossoming in them. And I'm trying to squash that, or I'm actually just telling them out loud that don't say stuff like that. You remind me of your dad or of your mom, or like your mom is feeding you lies. None of this is true. I pay her child support every month. I don't know why she tells you that I, I'm not paying, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't serve the child even to know that my mother is lying to me. That is not a kindness okay. because, because the child isn't ready to hear those things. They depend on this other parent for their life. Like, it's not like the kid lives at your house all the time. They never have to see that woman. They have to go back and live with her. And now they have the impression that she could be lying to me about anything. I'm not yeah. safe there if my mother is a liar. Thank so, you, Tracy. You know, thank you. And I'm saying thank you because I, <clears throat> I work hard not to say anything disparaging about their their mum, <clears throat> and um, but I can see in what you're saying, even sometimes, you know that yeah, well, but is actually is actually is 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 actually part of that. So we we should all look one or two layers below what we're actually saying um um to, to to be responsible for that wow so yeah it's a this is uh this is a powerful conversation i hope, I hope everyone's no, wherever I'm they're glad. driving you know, or I, cooking i hope they're i got another now. layer of this recently another aspect of this recently talking with david sims who's the husband of laurie who you yeah i guess yeah. they were probably both on the podcast eh when you uh he wasn't them? available actually i just oh, okay oh, yeah. i'm sorry because he's he's delightful i yeah I like both of them so much. But anyway, he came on my podcast and talked about his experience, um, which is they have an amazing, amazing story um, about their uh, step family. And, you know, so he was alone. He I, I think his wife left the marriage and left him with three boys aged eight and nine because they have triplets who were mm -hmm. eight years old and a nine year old. It's really hard to imagine. But um so I think the mom in the beginning days was uh, not very involved and she would take them for one day every other weekend or something like that. It was very limited visiting. And so the kids, of course, had, you know, very mixed feelings about going to see their mom. They really wanted to see her, but it was also kind of a weird situation because she was never around. And he, they were little, you know, eight and nine years old. And he wanted to send them off with this kind of, blanket of good feeling and so as he was driving them over there he would be saying I love you guys so much I'm really going to miss you while you're gone I can't wait for you to come back and he realized later that that was probably not you know he was doing it from the best of intentions yeah. but it was probably not at all helpful to leave his kids with the idea that he was not okay in some way while they were gone Yes. I, you know, I, I heard, and, I heard that in what you were saying a moment ago. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, I, you know, what I know now, I wouldn't do that again, even though like my feeling was, I want them to know as they go to their mom, how much I love them. But, you know, that's where we're, sometimes we're just coming from such a loving place, but it's still in some way you're undermining their experience of being with their mom, because there's something in the back of their head saying, you know, dad's missing us. Yes. He I can't wait for it to come back. He's on his own. We yeah. should be there with him. We're leaving yeah. him to go there. It's like it's confusing in a kid's mind. Yeah. 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 And uh and, and just before before we get into the blended family stuff, is is there anything you can share on diffusing some of the conflict that happens between a dad and and his separated or estranged wife? What is it, is that an expression? Yeah. I think it's really important to put boundaries around it. Yeah. And that can be done in a variety of ways, but one really good way is to use a co-parenting, like a third party app. Uh, and there are quite a few of those co-parently app close, um, our family wizard, talking parents, those are all the names of apps that serve yeah. this exact purpose where all the communication between the, the parents goes through the app. And there are other, you know, they have other tools like scheduling and finances, whatever, that doesn't matter. But the communication needs to be civil 
and polite and limited. And um, very often it gets into shouting matches on the phone or, or like 50 text messages in an hour. Um, and like, you don't have to, like that stops when one person stops participating yeah. in it. So you have to just say, I, I can just step away from that way of being and offer, this is the platform that I'm willing to continue this conversation on. And you don't answer any other kinds of communication. Yeah. Um, one of them, I think our family wizard even has a function where it will review your message says, and flag stop, it for. Stop. Yeah. It just flashes at you and says, No, don't spend that. This is way too spend. long. Stop what you're writing. Yeah. Step away from the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Go and have a cup of tea. Yeah. So um, it flags your language so that the yeah. it makes it more polite or more, you know. Well, I've whatever so conducive I, to yeah. to arrangements. So I think that's it. Like you, you don't like you. I mean, really not having any kind of inflammatory conversations in front of the kids because that's just so toxic. Yeah. And somebody yeah. just has to say, "I won't entertain that," and it can feel really, um, let's say, emasculating to walk away from that kind yeah. of argument where someone is shouting at you, oh, there you go again, just running away from your problems, you know? Yeah, so emasculating for people who are not quite sure, that's like um, losing all your male power in the situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's one of, like, this is part of the new territory that sometimes dads, it's sometimes it's new for them to experience this idea that you have to let go of your habitual way of being in conflict to get the goal that you want, which is the, that your kids are healthy, that they respect you, that they want to be um, around you. Yeah, totally. And that, that for dads is, and mums is stop looking at everything day by day and start to look at the longer, at the longer picture. And particularly once you've been separated for a while, you become much more comfortable with, the long game rather than the pain of every that's right every that's day. right that's why i i walk dads through a process in my coaching program to really uh you know dig deep inside and talk about that find the couple of things that are most important to you that you can focus on so that we can make some goals you know, that yeah. we can make goals that are related to your important values, not someone else's, but what's important to you. And once you know those those goals of the, your parenting goals or what you want for your children, what you want for yourself too, then we build a strategy of how to achieve that. And then we know which tools fit into that strategy because there are thousands of, of parenting tools. And... Um, they're, they don't all apply in all situations. And I think that's where a lot of parents, both moms and dads, get into trouble is just sort of grabbing things off the shelf or throwing darts at, you know, at a problem with a different kind of solution each time. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't, but they're not, there's no clear strategy of parenting where you say, this is what I do when this happens. And it gets yeah. me this result and I want that result because, you know, that's um, that's aligned with something very important about me. And it also helps you, you know, in that classic job of parenting, which is picking your battles, right? You can't uh, have boundaries up all the time about everything. You can't be pushing back all the time about everything. You have to let something slide if you're going to keep your sanity. Yeah. And that's, that's a really good point. And here, do you know what we're going to do, right? We're not going to talk about the blended family stuff today we're going to just stick on this subject and then we'll do a part two and we'll talk about the blended family because sure. uh that, that, that otherwise we're not going to do the subject justice so on that point there you just mentioned dad's got his own way family values his own idea yeah. about respect tying your shoelaces up washing your hands how you sit at the table what you say on the like he's got his own ideas right and then <clears throat> No surprise, if you separated, 
you probably don't agree on half of these things. <laughs> How can a dad um, feel like he's still honoring his values whilst leaving space for the mother's values as well? I would say that he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to leave space for them. Yeah. He has to um, just respect that it's okay that it's different at his house than it is at her yeah. house. Yeah. And kids are so, it's so much easier for kids to grasp that than the parents. It's the parents who struggle with that. <laughs> totally, the, totally. The kids, the kids get it. You just say, the reason is that I'm your dad and we do things this way here. Yeah. And when you're at your mom's house, you'll do it that way over there. They already know that the rules are different on the playground than they are inside the classroom. They know the rules are different in church than at yeah. my grandmother's house. The rules are different everywhere. And kids are, kids are totally open to that concept. They just need they clarity. Hard time with that. Kids just need clarity. Adults don't give kids half the flipping yeah. respect deserve because kids are kids are like oh what what half there and half here okay that's fine yeah, okay like yeah they just get it and worry that we've got about it yeah it, uh, and i i mean i'll just tread quickly on the blended family thing but yeah. lots of stepmoms ask me like how can we make it fair because my kids who live here with us all the time have this rule abc and then the stepkids come over and they have some other more permissive situation yeah. And then my kids get upset because his kids are allowed to stay up until 11 o'clock and watch TV and my kids have to go to bed. And I said, you just say, I'm your mom. I make the rules. Yeah. I'm not I'm not the mom of them. They have another mom. I don't I don't agree with it, but I can't fix how she's making her rules. And and dad, um, you know, isn't in a position to argue because they're coming here to stay and he can't change the rules for them, you can make up whatever you want, but they get it. The kids yeah. get it. It's not hard for them. Yeah, totally. And that is about being upfront, isn't it? It's about this. On the one hand, you said earlier, you know, be responsible for the things that we say. But on the other hand, um, is be be free and open with 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 the explanation of of things because clarity is is a much uh, easier place to be that when there's no kind of confusion it's actually much less stressful for for, for a child um than, than confusion oh, absolutely yeah. i and i i i tell people all the time how important it is to um repeat 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 like what's happening next you know like to lay out for kids um especially when they're going back and forth. I, I think there's no way to understand how disruptive that is in your, yeah. in your life. And it's like, we turn them upside down, you know, that snow globe thing that has the, yeah, yeah. the flakes and the people inside, you know, like they're, they're just like this, uh, you know, like kind of swirling around all the time. And we take for granted that the kids are coming Friday night and Saturday morning, we'll have breakfast, then we're going skating, and then we have a play date with whatever. And then, you know, Saturday night supper is um, at the restaurant or at my sister's. And then we're, you know, they don't even know what day of the week it is, or how yeah. long am I staying? Like, how long is a weekend? It's, remember how long the summer felt when you were a oh, kid? Yeah. Like, so just continuously saying, tomorrow, here's what's going to happen. Or in the morning, here's what's on for today. Or in the afternoon saying, and remember tonight we're going to whatever it's very calming yes to have that kind of um that kind of like reiteration yeah. of the schedule and of you know how long is it till i go back to mom's or when i'm leaving how long until i come back again or what you know yeah 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 and like routine and finding Routine. routines that kids kids are comfortable with. A friend of mine, uh, ex ex girlfriend actually, um, uh, she worked at Nickelodeon, and one of her friends was her boss. I've now from friends with him as well. And I said to him one day, "Why did you put on reruns of SpongeBob all the time?" He said, "Kids love the familiarity of the repeats. They yeah. feel very safe to know that." And they couldn't tell you that they'd seen it a hundred times before. They just, they're just comfortable with the fact that they kind of know what's, what's happening. And we should aim to create that in our, in our homes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, We're all about like novelty and we want there to be a surprise and something new all the time. And that that's yeah. really 
you can do that in very small parameters, yeah. but they mostly they want they want it to be the same all the time. Yeah. Have dinner, sit on the couch. In watch a fun our, way, watch, obviously, watch not the, the same wretched thing all no, no, of course. Oh, Tracy, you're back. You froze a little bit for a second there. Yeah, um, yeah in, oh, a, in a fun way. Yeah, no, it's fine, but not a really rigid routine where the kids are like they're static. They can't. They can't. They're scared to even even move. But uh, yeah, I know that for for myself. We get we've watched we watched all of Modern Family. Then we watched the middle. Like so, we have our TV slot basically. Yeah where where it's just and then they're begging me can we just watch one more can we just watch one more yeah, but it, nice. equally that's cuddle time on the couch it's wind down before bed it's you know it's 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 a positive thing nice um okay brilliant well listen as we get towards the end of this uh what's you know you work with dads who are going through this through this tricky time um i know for myself that there was a a bit early on which was really painful and scary and 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 oh my gosh like 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 my world was caving in yeah and then there's a bit in the middle because i work with dads in this respect as well there's a bit in the middle where they're just starting to rebuild their life and they're going oh i don't know i don't i'm not sure i can cook the kids favorite dinners or i don't know what curtains to buy or i don't know or what am i going to do when the kids aren't here and then there's a bit that comes like stage three where they're now actually they 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 quite enjoy their own time when they're on their own, and they they love when the the kids are there. Um, how do you help dads transition through those three stages, or what can you, you say to encourage dads in that, about that? That's an interesting. I hadn't uh, thought about that question before about about transitioning. But like most of the guys that I'm uh, working with are already in a new relationship. Oh, okay, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, so they've already. You know, they've already come through those parts, really. Yeah. Um, but okay, I so guess... jump, jump, jump to that, Tracy. Jump to that. A dad's a dad's in. A, this is a perfect way to to end up part one of our of our session. Okay. A, a dad has made the jump. He's now in a decided. He's in a, he's in a serious relationship, and he's thinking about moving in with the the girlfriend how does he approach that that uh that that how so this is how we're going to end today's session right how does he approach that subject with the kid because he's going to be stressing about it right are they going to say are they going to kick off are they going to agree are they going to cry are they going to run off how can he peacefully in his own mind have that conversation effectively with his children well i think he's already hopefully paved the way with introducing yeah. her in a good way and like the basic concept is that that this new partner just the way i talked about archetypes before with the yeah the you know single mom and dad and the stepmom and dad um the archetype of the stepmother is someone who is in the way of your relationship with your dad as a child from the child's perspective this new partner is someone who is standing between you and your dad energetically speaking i yeah. love to i love to work with these kind of energetic images or visuals she's standing in between you and your full relationship uh, between you and getting everything that you want from your dad so she needs to go about intentionally demonstrating that that is not true that she is there to support your perfect relationship with your dad. She's going to make it even better than it would have been if she wasn't there because she's an extra pair of hands who can do a lot of things while dad can be all about you. Uh, especially if there's more than one child, right? It, it really helps a lot. Now each of you get to have time alone with dad because there's another adult. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. To occupy the the other kids or whatever. So there are a lot of important, purposeful things that that new partner can be doing along the way to take the fire out of that uh, feeling on the part of the child that this is a catastrophe. You know that my my dad is with someone new and that's a terrible thing. Um, and I think it's also really important for the dad to. Take, uh, how shall I say, to feel good about his responsibility to model what it is to be a good husband. 
Yes. He wants his kids to observe him in that role because they're both going to take their both, however many, right? The boys and the girls are going to go out into the world and either be that kind of husband or look for that kind of husband. Yeah. Yeah. And they need to see that. They need to see him in a functional, healthy, happy, loving marriage relationship to complete their transformation, their transition as adults. It's part of what you want to to give to your kids as a gift for, you know, as they go out into the world. And so you have to um, negotiate that with them. They might, your kids might still not be, you know, a hundred percent happy about this situation, but you can, you can talk to them in that way and say that, you know, that this is uh this is something I want for you. I want you to see this part of me that otherwise you don't get to see this part of me. And I want you to know all of who I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're sharing not just the situation, but you're sharing your, how you're going to grow in it. You're sharing your values in that moment. You're, you're sharing, you're painting a picture for them where they can feel emotionally connected to what's going on inside you rather than just giving them the circumstances. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I think that's, that's how I would approach it. And, yeah. um, oh, there was something else I was going to say. And it's gone out of my mind anyway, <laughs> next time. But, but not all men are, you know, the, the classic kind of, again, it's a bit cliched about men not being able to verbalize their, 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 their feelings that way yeah. well into words. Well, so what they want to say is, I know this is going to be really tricky, uh, but I do love this woman and I really want to create something where we're all really happy together. And they go, uh, yeah, we're moving in and, 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 uh, and it's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> and the kids they, just go, they, <laughs> they mostly want to know what is this going to mean for me? Right. Yeah. And I think there's, there's also a, a kind of default image of like, everything is going to change now. And in fairness, very often the, bio mom is taking advantage of this moment to reinforce that negative impression and to really press on the kids that, oh, your dad's getting remarried. He's not going to have any time for you now. He's all about, you know, he's in a new relationship and that's where his focus is and he's not going to have time to be with you now. They, It happens very often that that's the moment when the more the alienation ramps up, where the conflict ramps up. It okay. ramps up when you get engaged. It ramps up when you get married or move in together. It ramps up big time when you have another child. Um, it ramps up when her new relationship falls apart. That yes. she, she had a lot of hopes pinned on maybe, you know, a new person that she was living with or, you know, romantically involved with. That falls apart. That's another window of opportunity for the uh you know, for this monster to come to life and sort of pull apart the dad's relationship with his kids there are a lot of external circumstances that you can't control. But as you said before, you know, it's really, it's all about focusing on yourself and what you can, what you can change. And that's enough. It is enough. Yeah. Cause that gives our children that fun, that foundation. They can look at, they like, well, dad's solid. Yeah. everything's cool with dad dad's solid yeah. we're okay when we're with dad yeah. we're okay yeah 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 perfect well when we do the part two we will get into that whole challenges of 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 of, of moving in and and how people react and and the stresses that puts on relationships because i mean i was a i was a stepchild i was a step parent i know in one of your podcasts i listened to you said you don't really like people talking about it as a step parent step child um I never really called my mum my stepmom. I, I don't think I ever really called her my mum either, basically. Yeah. But um, I think uh, a, a better way of saying that is, is that I never, I never spoke about my stepson as my stepson. Um, yeah. I, he doesn't talk to me anymore, so I don't really, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really have I'm any sorry. way of, ex I don't have any way of explaining who he is now. I, he's just, he's a nineteen-year-old bloke who lives in the world, basically. Um, but certainly, if I'm relating to the past, I'll talk about it as. I had I had a son from the marriage, you know, stepson. But um, yeah, all all complicated things. And blimey, I think the final thing I want to say on this subject is, dads, be gracious with yourselves. Be you know, don't expect this to be easy. 
um, um, allow it to be tricky and messy without getting too upset about, oh my gosh, it's going wrong. Yeah. Like if you take something out of the oven, it's going to be hot. <laughs> like it's, it just is. And being a step parent, balancing a blended family, dealing with an ex partner, it's not always going to be easy. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So Tracy, um, uh, your website again, just briefly. I'll just uh, 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 Facebook Essential Step Mom on Facebook. Yeah, we've got uh, the Undeletable Dad book link, which is uh, shared in the comments, and the Facebook and, uh, group is called again One for, for dads? the Dads. One for the Dads. One for the Dads. Good. I've sent you a. a, a uh, someone's just someone just accepted me in anyway this afternoon so so we were in there as well so uh yeah there's so many dad groups now i should have started mine back in 2016 when i first had the idea but it's like barbers isn't it you know there's flipping hairdressers on every street exactly corner. we'll never run out there we'll never exactly. run out of dads <laughs> yeah and um and the most important thing is that we all get knowledgeable and wise on these subjects so that we can be the best dad we can possibly be and the best partner we can possibly be yeah great brilliant tracy thank you so much this was a I'll pleasure goodbye. thank you for inviting me oh you're welcome let me say goodbye to the team super dad crew team super dad thank you for joining us this has been the team super dad podcast go over to any of your favorite uh, podcast services and search for team super dad with johnny jensen ask your smart speaker for play Team Super Dad with Johnny Jensen podcast, and you will be straight into the Team Super Dad uh, latest episodes. Until next time, I will say Team Super Dad out. Bye. This has been Team Super Dad. Find us at TeamSuperDad.com. Join the program and create the best life ever for you and your children. You are not alone. You're on Team Super Dad.